Pharrell Williams is set to take fans on a unique and personal journey with his upcoming documentary, Piece by Piece, which releases on November 8th, known for his chart-topping hits like Get Lucky and Happy. Pharrell uses an unconventional storytelling device in this film. The entire documentary unfolds through animated Lego figurines. While using Lego might initially seem like an unusual choice, it proves to be the ideal medium for the multi-talented artist to vividly express his inner experiences, especially given the unique way he perceives music and the world. In Piece by Piece, Pharrell opens up about a lesser known aspect of his life. He has synesthesia, a fascinating neurological condition that allows him to experience one sense through another. For Pharrell, this means music doesn't just fill his ears, it fills his mind with vibrant colors and intricate shapes, allowing him to visualize songs as if they were living artworks. Each melody, rhythm, and beat creates a textured and colorful scene in his mind, much like a kaleidoscope. This unusual sensory crossover makes Lego, bright, colorful, and endlessly modular, the perfect vehicle to represent how he experiences music. Throughout the film, Pharrell shares how synesthesia has shaped his entire creative process and his rise to fame. He describes how, for as long as he can remember, music has never been just an auditory experience. Most people hear music as notes, rhythms, and lyrics, but Pharrell sees patterns, shapes, and colors dancing before him. This unique way of processing sound gives him a special advantage in creating songs that resonate across cultures and generations. Synesthesia is a rare phenomenon, affecting only a small portion of the population. While some people with synesthesia might see colors when hearing music, others may taste words, feel textures when seeing shapes, or smell sounds. For Pharrell, this blend of senses means every song he produces becomes a vivid, immersive experience, with each sound forming a piece of a larger, colorful puzzle. This perspective is central to his collaborations with prominent artists like Daft Punk, Rihanna, and Jay-Z. Each song is an intricate assembly of shapes, colors, and feelings, which Pharrell likens to constructing something piece by piece, a reflection of the documentary's title. To me, music isn't just sound, Pharrell explains in the film. It's a feeling. It's color, shape, and movement. When I produce, I see the sounds coming together like blocks snapping into place, just like Lego. His ability to see music in this way allows him to bring precision to his productions, building songs with a sense of depth and cohesion. This visualization process is a gift, but it can also be overwhelming. Ferrelli's heightened sensory awareness means that creativity is always on, making it hard for him to disconnect from his work. However, this constant immersion in music has pushed him to break boundaries, allowing him to redefine genres and forge new paths. In the documentary, viewers see Pharrell's life story reimagined through Lego scenes, giving a glimpse into his colorful, textured mind. From his childhood in Virginia Beach to his journey to international stardom, Piece by Piece captures pivotal moments with playful, vibrant animations that mirror Pharrell's experience of music as a blend of sound, sight, and emotion. It's a personal and whimsical reflection of his creative journey with each stage brought to life in intricate, visually rich scenes. Pharrell also reflects on how synesthesia influences his work beyond music. The condition affects his approach to fashion, art, and even film, with every creative decision being guided by the colors and shapes he perceives in his mind. Collaborating with brands like Adidas and Chanel, Pharrell brings this sensory awareness to his designs, infusing each project with his distinct vision. He describes how each venture feels like an opportunity to build something beautiful one brick at a time, whether it's a melody, a design, or an entire song. In one of the film's more candid moments, Pharrell reveals that while synesthesia has fueled his creativity, it has also presented challenges. His heightened sensitivity can sometimes make it hard to turn off his mind. Sometimes it feels like I can't escape it, he admits. Music is always there, moving, shifting, showing me new things. Yet he emphasizes that his synesthesia has been one of his greatest gifts, allowing him to see the world in his unique way. 
He hopes Piece by Piece will encourage others to embrace their own ways of experiencing life, no matter how different or unconventional. Pharrell's synesthesia in the documentary reflect a broader view of creativity and resilience. By sharing his journey, he aims to inspire people to appreciate diversity in how we perceive and express ourselves. He believes that each of us has a unique lens through which we experience the world, and he invites viewers to celebrate these differences through art, music, or even something as simple as Lego blocks. The film not only offers an insight into Pharrell Tull's world, but also raises awareness about synesthesia as a fascinating aspect of human perception. Dr. Jamie Ward, a cognitive neuroscientist specializing in synesthesia, notes that this condition can manifest in many forms and is more common among artists and creatives. For some, it's tasting words, seeing numbers as colors, or associating sounds with specific shapes. These sensory overlaps can profoundly shape one's creativity and interaction with the world. In one example, Dr. Ward explains how synesthesia can involve connections between visual and taste perceptions. For instance, someone might taste colors or feel shapes when listening to music, creating a multi-sensory tapestry of experiences that enrich everyday life. This blending of senses is a deeply personal experience and is unique to each individual with synesthesia. Pharrell's documentary gives audiences a peek into this world, showing how sound and color interact dynamically in his mind, shaping his work across all his creative pursuits. While synesthesia is often compared to the physical sensations triggered by ASMR, Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, it operates on a more intricate level, where ASMR might produce tingling sensations from specific sounds or visuals. Synesthesia blurs sensory boundaries to create rich overlapping perceptions. Pharrell's journey with synesthesia is a window into how the human brain can defy conventional sensory limits, revealing a world of creative potential. Ultimately, Piece by Piece is an eye-opening exploration of Pharrell's creative mind celebrating the kaleidoscopic beauty of synesthesia and inviting viewers to appreciate the unique ways we all see the world. By candidly sharing his journey, Pharrell offers an inspiring message. There is no right or wrong way to perceive life. Embracing our unique experiences can lead to new forms of art and creativity, shaping a richer, more colorful world for us all. Pharrell Williams has had a lot of hit songs over the years, both with the Neptunes and as a soloist, but his track Happy was an especially huge success after it was released in 2013. The upbeat tune was made for the soundtrack of the movie Despicable Me Too, and it also appeared on Williams' 2014 album Girl, which also included singles like Come Get It B.A.E. and Marilyn Monroe. The success of Happy, though, was unparalleled. After its release, Happy was absolutely everywhere. According to Yahoo Entertainment, the song was 2014's best-selling song, with 6.45 million copies sold. Additionally, Williams won a Grammy for a live performance of Happy, and the track was nominated for a Best Original Song at the Academy Awards. Beyond sales and awards, Happy had a deeper significance for Williams. In the happy lyrics, according to Genius, Pharrell Williams sings about staying positive in the face of bad news and adversity. This is evident at one point in the song he croons, here come bad news talking this and that. Well, I should probably warn you, I'll be just fine. Later in the chorus, he instructs the listener to express that joy and clap along in various ways to make it known. It's an infectious, catchy song that you can't help singing along to when it comes on. And the track's focus on happiness was very much intended. During a June 2013 interview with Screen Slam, Williams revealed that the upbeat emotion in the title was indeed the inspiration for the track. The Despicable Me Too creators wanted a very positive, soulful tune for the movie, which was the song Happy. While he wrote the song for the movie, he also recognized the track's universal appeal, even without knowing the context of the film. It was awesome to be able to make a song that when you're feeling down, you can just play it and feel a whole lot better. 
Williams told the outlet. In a May 2014 interview with W Magazine, Pharrell Williams recalled how he came up with Happy while pitching songs to Despicable Me to producer Chris Melodandry. The track was actually the 10th and final one that Williams pitched. He told W, after nine different songs recorded fully, they were like, no, 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 no. So I went back and wrote Happy. I didn't have the melody, just the chorus. And after the artist wrote the tune, he seemed to feel the emotion of the title, Happy Itself. William said he was jumping around the room 20 minutes after he wrote the track. He declared it to be his last effort at writing a song for the Despicable Me Too soundtrack. And luckily, it was the one the producer chose. But though Happy became a huge success for Williams, it was originally intended to be sung by a very different artist. Before Pharrell Williams was known as a singer in his own right, he was a famous producer and songwriter from the Neptunes, who had worked with artists like Justin Timberlake, Gwen Stefani, and Daft Punk. So when the despicable Me Too producers chose Happy, it was intended for another artist to sing, CeeLo Green. In an April 2014 interview with The Howard Stern Show, Williams revealed that CeeLo recorded an impressive version of the song. Williams told Stern, he sounded amazing on it. He burns my version. But there was just one problem. CeeLo's record company, Electra Records, wanted the artist to concentrate on his upcoming Christmas album. So Williams decided to sing and release the song as a solo artist. Even though CeeLo lost out on having Happy as a hit song, Williams told Stern his fellow artist was supportive of the track's success. Happy, however, wasn't popular at first. Finally, Happy, as sung by Pharrell Williams, played during a key scene of Despicable Me, too, after the main character, Gru, voiced by Steve Carell, falls in love. The usually sullen character dances joyfully to the tune with his family, the minions, and people in the streets. Being paired with such a scene suggests that Happy could be interpreted as a love song, but Williams soon made sure it was known as more than that. When the song was first released with the movie in July 2013, Happy didn't get much radio airplay. Williams recalled in the 2014 interview with W. So a few months later in November 2013, he teamed up with the French directing team known as We Are From LA for 24 Hours of Happy, which called itself the first 24 hour music video. The day long presentation featured Williams and many celebs like Carell, Jamie Foxx and Jojo, among many others, dancing gleefully to the song over and over again. The 24-hour music video spread happiness across the internet and became a huge viral success. In March 2014, the song peaked at number one on the Billboard charts. So perhaps happy isn't merely a love song after all. It's all about bringing joy to everyone, including its creator, Pharrell Williams. <laughs> 